Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in this conference, a medicine conference, and I am delighted to be talking about psychology. So thank you very much to the organizers for inviting me. I'm going to be talking about uh, the work we've been doing with our um, athletes in Aspire Academy for quite a few years uh, who are adolescents and how they have now become successful elite adult athletes. I have no conflict of interest. We started uh, quite a few years ago with a bunch of kids who have now become uh, excellent athletes. And uh, this makes me uh, in particular quite proud of them because it's, uh, it's been quite a few years. I came to Aspire in 2008, in February 2008. And uh, we've been through quite a lot with them and I have learned a lot about the psychology of the young athletes because when you look at the literature it's so widely dispersed and there's so little written about it that I had to think about how was I going to work with these kids. We started with some success back in 2009 in the Youth uh, World Championships with uh, Hamid Almanai, his coach Ramil Ganiev from uh, Uzbekistan. Then 2009 with uh, Ashraf al Saifi, a world record under 20 world champion, uh, coach Alexei from Russia. Moad Ibrahim, 2016 world champion, discus throw under 20 with coach Ivica Jakalic from Croatia. Ahmed Magur uh, in the senior world championships in London uh, in uh, 2017 with coach Esa Yutrainen. And uh, more recently, uh, Basem Hemedia silver medalist in Tampere, and uh, Oba Barrow, Youth Olympic champion, with Lee Christopher from Great Britain. And I like to mention these names because these are the people who make things happen. It's mainly the coach and the athlete. We're only there to support and to continue to learn. So these stories are a product of teamwork. And uh, I've been privileged to witness all of this. I always say about myself that I am a privileged witness having experienced all of this with these young athletes and these coaches and this support team. I always say that I'm not the only psychologist in a multidisciplinary team. There is the sports physiotherapist who spends a lot of time with the athlete and who knows the athlete and who can do very good psychology many times. And the most important psychologist, when you really work day in, day out with the athlete, with the multidisciplinary team, when you go on camps with them, and when you travel to uh, international championships, is the coach. So I do learn a lot from coaches, in particular from world-class coaches, believe me. I'm still happy because I still hold the title of psychologist. That keeps me happy. So in this presentation, uh, I'm going to be talking about the concept of adolescence from a psychological point of view. Apologies for the simplicity, but uh, I think it is, it is always important to talk about the basics. What are we dealing with in Aspire? Which are the key developmental milestones uh, in adolescence? So what is it important that we need to know during adolescence? And as a sports psychologist from 2008, I was wondering what is it important for me to know as a practitioner that I can deliver to this young developing athlete? And also when we deal with athletes and we deal with people, a very important thing to note is to understand the culture because culture shapes thinking, behavior, and feeling. And it puts us in a better place when we work in particular in this part of the world. So the part of psychology that deals with um, adolescence is developmental psychology. Nowadays, uh, from developmental psychology, we understand that we develop from the moment we are born until the moment we die. But there are two stages in life when we develop the most. One is adolescence. The second one is the terrible twos. If you're a father or a mother and you have a toddler who when you say yes, he or she will say no, and then they'll throw a tantrum is because they're beginning to understand that they exist in the world and they want to have an impact in it and they want to manipulate the world. So if you ever needed an explanation about the terrible twos, there you go. The second one 
um, part of our lives when we develop the most is clearly during adolescence. The whole purpose of being an adolescent is to develop a sense of self, is to develop a sense of who we are. And it's very challenging and it's very difficult. That's why we call it an identity crisis. It is a critical part of our lives. There is a lot of confusion. There is a lot of uh, emotional reactiveness. Oh my God, my son is not nine years of age. Now he's 11, 12, what's wrong with him? They start to move from parents to peers. They start to become a little bit more independent. They have a heightened self-consciousness and they start to try different identities. So they, they change their clothing, they change their hairstyle and we're going crazy as parents. We're trying to understand what are they doing. They're testing different uh, identities and this is healthy for their development from a psychological point of view. Uh, this is only just a snapshot, but the, the bottom line here is that adolescence is a very difficult time in our lives, yet crucial for it is to come, which is adulthood. Now, what is adolescence? From a psychological point of view, from a developmental psychology point of view, when we talk about adolescence, Talking about uh, chronological time into psychological terms is very tricky, as you can understand, but the scientific community in developmental psychology needs to know what we are talking about. So we have this frame. Uh, early adolescence, approximately from 12 to 14 years of age. Middle adolescence, approximately, always approximately, and there is a lot of variability, and is it, uh, it is applicable to boys and girls. 15 to 18. Late adolescence, 19 to 21. Now, think about how many athletes are competing at the Olympics and they're 20, 21. For me, as a psychologist, they are adolescents. So this is very important to understand. Now, so, within adolescence, well, adolescence, it's a different population. In psychology, it's a different population. It's not childhood, it's not adulthood. And we need to treat them differently. Within, within adolescence itself, there are subpopulations. Hello, thank you very much, to make it more complicated. So early, middle, late. What is it that I need to understand? The, the highlights, what I need to understand, what, what's going on with, the, or what is it, is it going on mainly with an early adolescent? from a developmental psychology point of view. So these are some highlights. There is much more going on, but these are some highlights. Uh, there is an increased emotional reactivity due to the hormonal onset, of course. Uh, there is a struggle for autonomy. This is when they begin to get closer to friends. And this is very significant for something we're going to be talking about within the sports domain as well. And the fundamental question is, am I normal? What's going on? I'm not a child, I'm not an adult. So this is the fundamental question. And this creates a lot of confusion. Middle adolescence, abstract thinking develops, um, experimentation and risk taking. The perception of adolescence about risk is lower than in adults. So they do sometimes silly things and to them they may seem normal. To us, they are dangerous. And this is where the peak of identity development takes place. This is when the, there is the most confusion of ev everything. And uh, the fundamental question is, who am I? Uh, late adolescence, final stage of identity development, autonomy. They begin to be ready to, to be self-reliant and autonomous. Neurological networks fully developed. Hence, adult abstract critical thinking fully developed and uh, able to plan, pursue long-range goals. And then the question is, what am I going? What am I going to do with my life? So these are things that we need to understand when we're working with a 13-year-old as opposed to a 16-year-old, for example. Now, from our sports psychology point of view, my question was, well, what, do I, what do I need to know that is important so that I can deliver something to these kids? And of course, we deliver sports psychology uh, basic skills training package. Of course, we do that, and we adapt it to their understanding and everything. But I wanted really to know what is it really relevant at this stage. And some things are really interesting. The coach influences their motivation and, and fostering fun, interest, uh, fulfillment, learning skills. The coach becomes a very relevant person. Of course, we know that. 
But yes, we know as well that if you look below, they're beginning to struggle for autonomy and they're looking for peers and other significant people to become influential. So the coach all of a sudden becomes a very influential source for these young athletes. The coach helps to define, hopefully, a real perception of ability. Perception of ability is a concept that we use in developmental sports psychology, which we use as an indicator of psychological maturity. Perception of ability means how good they think they are. And this is very important because a lot of the things that are happening here now will have an impact for when we encounter an elite adult athlete. I will talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but just remember perceptions of ability, how good do they think they are. Younger adolescents, early, ad early adolescents, they use more avoidance strategies and less variety of coping strategies than in middle adolescents. They do not cope well with problems in life because they're not uh, as developed psychologically. They're not as mature. So when we have a kid in our uh, squad that is uh, quiet or inhibiting him or herself, we may think he's just happy doing well, but maybe he or she doesn't really know how to deal with the problem. There may be something going on. Middle adolescents, they start to report more stressors than early adolescents. This makes sense because there is more confusion. Life becomes more complicated. The world becomes too big and too complicated. Hence, more stress. They begin to use more variety of coping strategies. Now, one of the things we are trying to do is to use similar methodologies as used in the Western world to see if, if what we find here with our athletes matches what's being found in the world, and it does. As you can see here, early adolescents, they would use higher percentage of behavioral strategies as opposed to cognitive strategies. This is the behavior of doing something, like going to bed, listening to music, and this is the more complex, higher cognitive functioning, like thinking, reasoning, memory. As opposed to middle adolescents, where they use a higher percentage of cognitive strategies as opposed to behavioral strategies. So there is a shift in the way our young developing athletes, uh, how they cope with problems, and this is aligned with what happens with kids of the same age in the Western world. Also, avoidance strategies, 18% as opposed to 13%. Here, they turn away from the source of the stress more often. In other words, they don't deal accordingly with stress. Lower self-esteem, if injured, since self-esteem is more depending on physical appearance, this part of, it, of adolescence, uh, our, who we are, our physical representation of ourself has to do a lot with our body, what we look like, because there are so many changes going on. And so when we have an injured athlete, we need to be aware of how wearing a cast, being on crutches, being on a wheelchair temporarily, or having a deformity can affect their self-esteem, okay? more realistic perceptions of ability. So, there is a shift from early to middle adolescence with respect to how good do they think they are. And this is very important because research tells us that if you're 12, 13, 11, 14, and you tell your coach, I'm gonna be world champion, that's fine. There is nothing wrong with that. But if you're 18, 17 years of age, and you still tell your coach, I'm gonna be world champion, we need to be a little bit careful. So what we find here in Aspire is very similar, again, to what happens with kids the same age in the Western world. Younger uh, adolescents, they rate themselves unrealistically. So compared to the coach's ratings, they think they're better. However, older ones, middle adolescents, they would rate higher realistically. This has very strong implications from, for the adult athlete when he becomes an elite athlete, as I will show you. Late adolescents, 19 to 21 years of age. Uh, some authors claim that psychological, the psychological side of things in adolescents, they finish even later, okay? But this is the consensus. So here what we find is 
stress related to transitioning to higher education professions what am i gonna do am i gonna be part-time athlete part-time student full-time and i'm gonna go to another country with a scholarship and i'm gonna stay here in qatar so there is a lot of confusion and so what is important to note here is transitions from one stage in life to another stage in life creates a history and this history the result of this history is what we see in an elite adult athlete and we know that key reasons for dropout from junior athletes to elite athlete or adult athletes has to do with the changing cities changing career changing or starting education and so forth but in my opinion if you don't develop a sound realistic perception of ability if you think you're better than what you are when you acquire maturity a psychological maturity then you realize that you're not as good then is when you start thinking why am i involved in sport so i'd rather as well just drop out so in order to prevent this we work with coaches from younger ages so that we advise the coach to perhaps tell little Abdullah, Abdullah, yes, you can be world champion one day, but it's going to take a lot of work and you're going to have to work this and that and you're going to have to improve and you're going to have to go through injuries and it's going to be very, very difficult. But yes, it's possible, why not? But if we're working with someone at this stage, we're going to have to be still more difficult because as we saw before, some of them may have already achieved some results at the youth level or even at the junior level. And so the message is always to keep on working, focus in the process. For me, the priority is never athletic uh, performance, by the way. For me, the priority is always education. So both things aligned can work together and they, they should work together. And so we try to find for plan A, plan B, and help on those transitions and where the, the critical moments are, we are a little bit careful with, with managing this. And so if we have an athlete who doesn't successfully transition in his perception of ability or her perception of ability from one stage to another during adolescence, that will have an impact in the self-efficacy. And the self-efficacy, if it's weak, will have an impact in an adult athlete in the self-confidence. And the self-confidence variable happens to be the most important psychological variable before athletic performance. So we have a problem. And one of the uh, privileges that we have working in Aspire is that we know our athletes very well and we know the history and we can shape things to an extent. Cultural considerations, as I said before, culture is the other side of things. One side of things is adolescence, it's a different population. Let's not work the way I would be working with an elite uh, adult athlete but also culture, we need to understand culture. Uh, we know in this part of the world in particular, athletes tend to see difficulties at, as weaknesses. Uh, there is still a lot of stigma and privacy with everything to do with psychology. Uh, this happens as well in the Western world, but perhaps more so here. They turn to family for support, and this is great. Family is health, family is mental health, usually, hopefully, <laughs> but um, they should also talk, uh, turn to professionals uh, more often. There was a Canadian sports psychologist working in Kuwait for a few years, and I, I agree with uh, this quote. Uh, the speed and depth at uh, which relationships develop may generally be slower than what Western practitioners may have experienced before. And this happens here to some Westerners when they land in Qatar. And so my job is to try and help educate uh, sometimes newcomers into the culture that they're they're jumping in and we argue that uh, from a methodological point of view the biggest problem that I find the biggest barrier that I find as a practitioner in sports psychology in this part of the world is that we don't have we don't have instruments we, we, we lack questionnaires and, and scales and and it's not about Everything is not, it's not about questionnaires, obviously, but it is part of, of, of how we can get some information from the athlete. We compensate that, fortunately, by the fact that we work with them daily. I attend training daily, and this is very important because I just need to look at their faces and I know how they're feeling. 
but yes, this is this is one of the uh, one of the concerns. And so when we put together adolescents as a unique population, and we put together this unique population in a unique or different part of the world, which is culture, I thought, well, we're not in academia here. I'm not a professor, but I should be trying to use some of the the, method, the evidence based methodology that, that's been used in the rest of the world and see if I can apply that into what we do here. And so we plan our interventions in the same way that they've been carried out in the West and we find the same findings. We've been able to work on uh, self talk, we've been able to increase flow states, and we've been able to monitor stress recovery and many other things. Um, so for me, this is uh, reassuring that what we do is, is sound and is, is also uh, sound given the culture we work in and is sound given the, uh, the population that we work, we work in. So the message for me would be based on my experience and I can tell you my experience is based on a lot of mistakes and a lot of learning. Uh, don't underestimate when you work with an adolescent don't underestimate the chronological age because you may be having a 20, 21, even 22 year old person who's still not psychologically mature. Uh, and let's do, don't underestimate the context we work in because if we don't understand the context, we will not understand the athlete. And so I will leave you with a, with a photo of some of our academy athletes and the stadium where the World Championships will be held in 2019. Thank you very much.